Korea's viewers. Jambo, did you know that something remarkable happened at the Korean Ministry of Foreign Affairs at the beginning of 2024? Really? What happened? Hmm, let me give you a hint. The movie Interpreter was shot inside the headquarters of this place in New York, and the incredible diplomatic discussions held at this meeting was shot in the movie D13. Okay, I think I know. It's the United Nations, no, and I bet it. we're going to be talking about how Korea became a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council on January the first this year. You're right. The UN and Korea have a long story. Yeah, so back in the Korean War, uh, UN forces actually were playing a huge role. And the day after the war broke out, the UN Security Council held a meeting. And after that, we had 22 countries send soldiers to actually battle on the front lines. And 41 countries from the UN also were sending aid in the form of equipment or in other forms as well. You are a truly expert of Korean history. It was the first case of collective security under the spirit of the United Nations. So thanks to their sacrifices, we were able to preserve our freedom and peace. Yeah, so since Korea joined the UN on the 17th of September 1991, Korea produced a UN Secretary General. And it's actually the third time that Korea is serving as a member of the Security Council, uh, which remains as an exemplary case within mm. the UN. Yeah, nowadays, many K-pop idols, including ESPA, BTS, and Seventeen, are invited to the UN to give speeches and act as ambassadors, exerting a positive influence on young people around the world. So today, we'll talk about Korea's role as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council for the term 2024 to 25 and its plans in this new role. So let me introduce our guest. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Hi. I'm Gina Kim, Dean of Language and Diplomacy Division from uh, Hankook University of Foreign Studies. Thanks for having me today. Welcome to Thanks the show. Thanks for coming. So, Professor, I'm very interested. Uh, what role does the UNSC play within the UN and why is it significant? Well, actually, creation of institutional mechanism is normally uh, prompted by a major event. In the case of the UN, it was the World War II. The world leaders pursued the aim of preventing future conflicts on a global scale and fostering international cooperation. So when delegations uh, from 50 countries participated in drafting the UN Charter in San Francisco in 1945, the UN Security Council was given a broad legal authority to take actions to maintain international peace and security. So the role of the UNSC ranges from diplomatic engagement to enforcement actions. So, Professor, which countries form the UN Security Council? Well, the UN Security Council is composed of 15 member states, which include five permanent members and 10 non-permanent members. And permanent members are the main allied powers in World War II, and those include, obviously, the US, Russia, France, the UK, and China. Uh, permanent members have veto power, which signifies the key differences from other member states. Non-permanent members do not have veto rights, but they can bring regional issues to the table, take the lead in uh, drafting resolutions, shape the debates, and preside over meetings, and therefore contribute to the formation of consensus. Mm -hmm. So I read in the news that Korea was elected as a UN Security Council member, winning 180 votes out of 192 valid votes. So what is the meaning of Korea's election as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council? Well, with the ninth largest uh, contribution to the UN budget, and the world's 10th uh, largest economy, South wow. Korea has received international backing. It's the third term on the Security Council, and Korea's membership in the UN Security Council aligns with its uh, global pivot state strategy. This underscores South Korea's dedication to fostering to freedom, peace, and prosperity worldwide through international cooperation and solidarity based on shared values. Uh, I heard in 2024 that the Republic of Korea, the United States, and Japan will all simultaneously serve as members of the UN Security Council as well. Yes, you're right. This will be the second occasion since 1997 that Korea, the US, and Japan concurrently hold membership on the UN Security Council. 
So it is expected that uh, cooperation on various global issues will be discussed among Korea, the U.S., and Japan. It will be uh, strengthened anyway. Recently, there are very important issues going on that threaten international security and peace. So I think that the role of UN Security Council is becoming even more important yeah, in the future. Yeah, of course. So what are some of the achievements that Korea has made in its previous terms as a member of the UNSC? Well, in 1996 and 1997, South Korea bolstered its reputation as a peace-loving nation by addressing uh, the refugee issue, which became a very significant challenge in the post-Cold War era. And South Korea played a role in facilitating the adoption of the presidential statement on refugee protection. And in 2013 and 14, South Korea took the lead in discussions concerning civilian protection in armed conflicts as well. Mm -hmm. The disarmament of Syria's chemical weapons arsenal and the reinforcement of peacekeeping operations, etc. South Korea was very, very proactive in addressing concerns regarding North Korea, leading to the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2094 in response to North Korea's third nuclear test. So now that Korea has a different status and the international situation has changed a lot, so I'm looking forward to the next two years of Korea's activities as a new Security Council member. I hope New Jeans makes a speech next time. I hope that we will be able to respond more actively to the North Korea nuclear issues. And South Korea will take the initiative in leading discussions on North Korea's nuclear and non-proliferation issues, as well as the matter of human rights in North Korea as well. Uh, we actually had an episode on Korea's last year talking about human yeah, rights. Yeah, we invited a special guest from North Korea and heard a very vivid story about the situation in North Korea currently. Yeah, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the UN Commission of Inquiry's report on human rights situation in North Korea. It offered a timely uh, opportunity to refocus international attention on this particular issue. So the significance of addressing human rights abuses in North Korea extends beyond the imperative of maintaining universal human rights standards. It is intrinsically linked to the more broader concerns surrounding North Korea's nuclear and missile programs representing two aspects of a single issue. And I heard that we will not only contribute to the North Korean issues, but also participate in activities aimed at maintaining or promoting peacekeeping and peace building. Yes, UN peacekeeping operations became possible with the authorization of the UN Security Council, which decides the means, duration, and mandate of the operations. And in the area where South Korea has made significant contributions, beginning with the deployment of the Sangnuk Su Yun to mm -hmm. Somalia in 1993, followed by the Dongmyeong unit to Lebanon in 2007, and the Hanbin unit uh, to South Sudan in 2013. Wow. Um, a total of seven units of our, our armed forces have engaged in peacekeeping operations till today. Wow. I'm so proud to be a Korean. <laughs> yes, of course. And over 20,000 individuals have participated in the UN peacekeeping op operations across 25 mission areas, showcasing South Korea's commitment in contributing to global peace and security. South Korea being a developed country today was hugely supported by the international community. So in recognition of this support, South Korea is very much dedicated to actively engaging in peacekeeping operations as a gesture to uh, show some gratitude and commitment to global peace and security, which mirrors the assistance uh, it received during its time of urgent need. And I heard that Korea is actually going to actively participate in the WPS, the Women, Peace and Security Agenda too. Yes, right. In 2018, South Korea launched a Peace with a Women initiative to enhance its international contributions to the Women, Peace and Security Agenda, especially focusing on the response to sexual violence in conflict. 
So as a member of the Security Council, South Korea is very much committed to broadening the discussions on women, peace, and security agenda with the Security Council, while it also will seek uh, to create synergies with the Peace and Women in Initiative. Mm -hmm. mm. I think Nugents can give speeches on that issue. I think there are more areas that we can contribute to, uh, including emerging security issues on top of the traditional security issues. Yeah, South Korea has taken very, very uh, proactive stance in tackling issues related to emerging technologies. There is a widening consensus within the international community on the imperative to counter cyber threats. In response, South Korea has intensified its efforts to elevate global awareness and assumed a leadership role in combating these cyber crimes. And climate change also remains a pressing item on the uh, global agenda because uh, the impact of climate change on peace and security becomes more profound. Discussions with the Security Council on this issue have grown increasingly active, and South Korea is very much committed to contributing to this effort. On today's focus, we talked about Korea's re-election as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council for the first time in 11 years with an elevated status. So how was it today? Very exciting. I'm so excited to see what Korea achieves in its next two years as a non-permanent member of UNSC. Yeah, I can also see the significant challenges that loom in the domain of international peace and security. But I believe that South Korea has both the political will and the capacity to uh, enhance the accountability and effectiveness of the UN Security Council in executing its core missions of preserving international peace and security. That's it for today. Thank you. See you, See you next time. time. Woo.